much. The Drew Barrymore Show, weekdays at 3 on Channel 3. You know it's not every day that you log on to your computer, begin to sort through your emails, and see one from a good friend that says, Hey, Julie, I was just visiting the White House uh, by personal <laughs> invitation. Would you like me to come on 3 Plus You and talk about it? But that's what happened to me a couple of weeks ago. Chris Morris is the good friend. This morning he has brought his good friend, now also mine, Patrick Hampton. Good to see you both. Hey, good to see you too. So nice we're going to gonna kind of stumble our way through this conversation because the honest truth is uh, that here we are a week before the election. We all know that. This is not intended it to be in any way a political conversation. Right. It is an honest conversation, however, because <laughs> it is a little bit unusual to get that email in my inbox, right. Chris. So what was the visit like to the White House, and I guess how did it all happen? Yeah, so um, it was just, a, it was a blast, first off, I can say that. Um, Patrick and I are both part of an organization called uh, Blexit, which is a nonprofit, but it's all about basically freeing up blacks, not minorities, Latinos, and there's plenty of white people too, so I mean, all, all colors. Mm -hmm. Um, to really just kind of think for themselves and just have the freedom to look at what their values are, see if, you know, whatever political candidate that they want to vote for, just ask themselves honestly, does this line up with my values? And have the freedom to, you know, ask those questions, think for yourself, and then live in that freedom. Because oh. there's a lot of... Um, there's a lot of pushback depending on your family dynamics and culture that, that sometimes people don't feel free to live that out. I'm going to want to come back to that in a second okay. because I think that's a very fair conversation to have on the cusp of the holiday season because yeah. a lot of families are thinking right now, gee, how are we going to all sit around the dinner table? Right. But Patrick, as I understand the story, y'all were, there were four of you from Chattanooga who went, is that yes. right? Well, actually five of us. Five of you yeah. who went, okay. Yes. It was five of us that went and the event was to actually support the police. It was called back the blue right. and what we wanted to do is to get another narrative out there I think a lot of times in the media the police get a lot of flack for just doing their jobs and we wanted to let them know that there is a sect of the black community that doesn't want to protest them we simply want to support them and we want our communities to be safe so we're trying to kind of be more civic about it mm -hmm. and have a conversation hello, instead of just protesting hello, hello. And that was hello, part hello, of the reason hello, we Thing. My, we are my, seeing my it here with all this extraordinary, we're using that word, voter turnout. Hello. Certainly a lot of it early on. We don't know what election day itself will look like. But regardless of which way you do cast your ballot, the fact that we live in a country where you have access to the White House is pretty darn cool, don't you think? Yeah, it was pretty amazing. So just to kind of to that point, the reason we were there was for an event called Back the Blue. It was pretty amazing. We probably had what 2,000 close to that pack yeah, help me 2, out 2,200 2,200 um, just people communities Latino black white all there just in, in solidarity test, for test, supporting test, the police test, law and order test, we test, all test, believe test, is important test, you know test, done well done test, right test, with you know, righteousness right. but we wanted to support those um, those people in the blue and it's funny just walking around wearing you know memorabilia supporting police you would get looks from police officers who, who appreciated it really? standing up for them which yes. we feel like is kind of rare in this climate that we're in right now yeah you both have a lot of experience helping those who might otherwise not have a voice or not have someone looking out for them. You as a mm -hmm, teacher, Chris, right. and now as a public speaker and mm -hmm. um, mentor, really, in a way. You, Patrick, as I understand it, have had your hands in yes. an awful, awful lot of organizations. Right now, you're currently working with Hamilton Flourishing. Yes, Hamilton Flourishing, and that's what we do. We actually kind of research a lot of the policies, local policies here. One of them is uh, the police advisory board that's going to be on the ballot this year. And so so we want to want people to have the right information when they go to the voting booth to vote right. for mm -hmm. things like that. And so that's one of the things that I, that I really think is important that we have both sides of the argument. For so long in Chattanooga, uh, and I hate to say this about media, but media sometimes just put one story out there. What me and Chris want to do, we're on this show today, is because we want the other side to be heard. We want our communities to know that it's okay for police to patrol our neighborhoods and to keep us safe. So I want to thank you, Julie, for just having us on, just to have the other side, because a lot of people out there don't get to hear this side. Well, I mean, we'll both kind of stumble our way, all three of us will, maybe through kind of a quagmire a little bit, because mm -hmm. it's, a, it's an uncomfortable conversation to have, even mm -hmm. in 2020, mm -hmm. to know how to talk comfortably race in America, right? Yes. Here we stand, three people who can have conversations about a lot of things, <laughs> but 
I'm obviously white, you're obviously black, mm -hmm. and it can become uncomfortable mm -hmm. to know how honest you can be. Yes. And it sounds like what y'all are wanting is to say, as long as you're speaking from the heart, yes. right. let the dialogue flow. Yes. Right. That's, I, I would say, and that's really what America's about. I mean, when you look at the founding of this country, all of them didn't have the same thoughts. It was a diversity of thoughts yeah. where they came together to create what we have today as the Constitution of the United States. And that's what's great. I think we need to have more civil conversations like this on the air where it's not hostility or I don't have any you know, ill will towards you because of your skin color. Mm -hmm. As Martin Luther King said, we shouldn't judge each other by each other's skin color, but by the content of character. Right. And that's what we're here to do. So I have a daughter. My, one of my daughters is 22. Mm -hmm. So obviously if she's 22 and I'm 50, we kind of approach life from a different vantage point often, mm -hmm. right? But I tell her I learn from her all of the time. Mm -hmm. And I think she learns from me too. But we are at a point where we can talk about differences of opinion on everything from cooking yes, to you right. name it, right? <laughs> it doesn't have to be anything deep always. Right. Um, but the more you talk and open your ears, you do learn. So mm -hmm. you're not necessarily saying that you want to have all the answers. Mm -hmm. You just want to be able to talk. Yes. Right. I mean, that's the foundation of relationship, right? You have to be able to communicate. And I really feel like the way things are, whether it be social media and the way the media cycle goes these days, it sets us up to not have relationship, but to get everyone's thoughts and ideas out there. Because you seek what's already familiar? Yeah. And so it just causes divisiveness. So the more that people can hear kind of where we're coming from, hear our story, where relationship can be the foundation then it makes you more willing to hear people's viewpoints that might differ from your own and then get to a point where you kind of meet in the middle and we can all head towards a common goal. Mm -hmm. And so for it to really be a healthy, vibrant community here in Chattanooga, we think it's extremely important that people hear our heart, we hear their heart, even though we disagree, we're able to find that common, oh, we both want the same thing. We both want to love our community. We want to love the disadvantaged. Right. We might think, you got to support the police to do that. Somebody might think you got to defund. Okay, well, what's really the solution here? And so when we can have that freedom and that foundational root of love, we can have those conversations and, and hopefully get somewhere as a country. So that's kind of where we're at. Look, we stepped out on a limb this morning, and we kind of know that we did. But you can't get that email in your inbox and ignore <laughs> it. Uh, they deserved a chance to come and talk about their experience, and, and we hope that you enjoyed the conversation as much as I did. Thank yes. you both so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for having us. Back after this. The kitchen is the heart of your home. Follow your